Mike. Need your daily fix on mixed martial arts. We're going to kind of recap Bellator 155. From UFC 198. Who's who. Kind of a controversial decision. And who's not. I couldn't figure out why, and then they hit me. Well, don't you fret, because Golden State Media Concepts got, got you covered. covered. Get your daily dose of MMA podcasts. Everything from the UFC, the Bellator Fighting Championships, Extreme Cage Fighting, and Victor Fighting Championships, and, and so, so much, much more. more. Join us as we talk about some of the biggest names in mixed martial arts. We've got you covered here on Golden State Media Concepts MMA Podcast. All right, now, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC MMA podcast, the UFC 229 post-fight edition. I am your host, Tate, and with me is Hermilo. How you doing, Hermilo? Doing great. How are you, Tate? I am... I don't know how to... I don't even know how to tell you what I, how I am with this. UFC 229, which was a spectacular event, ended with a massive, massive black eye. And when I when I look at this and I and I, I step back and I take a look at the situation, I'm gonna start off by when I say give you my take on this. I originally picked Khabib to win the fight, and Khabib did win the fight. Uh, but the day of the fight, I changed it. The day before the fight, I changed my prediction, uh, to Connor just because I knew how bad Khabib had gotten into I me. Mean, Connor had gotten into Khabib's head, but what transpired after the fight, in my opinion, was just it's disgusting. It was, it was my, it was an event. It was one, it was a great event that ended in such a way that I thought it was the biggest black eye that the UFC has ever received in an event. It reminded me a lot of the Holyfield Mike Tyson fight. Now that was a mut that was that was an absolute crazy event. I was actually supposed to be at that event, but I didn't go. But when you look at what it, what transpired where after Khabib stopping Connor and and we're gonna touch on the fight uh, Khabib started to yell at Con at Connor, and then he turns around. He takes his mouthpiece out and he throws it at the fence, and he starts yelling outside the ring, and he's yelling at Connor's corner. Then, out of nowhere, he jumps over the cage, and he actually attacks a member of Connor's camp. Then another crazy thing happened, where one member of Connor's camp came in. while Connor was on the ground and kind of recovering one of Connor one of the members came at Connor Connor and and you know approached Connor in an aggressive way like he was going to hit him uh, another member jumped over the cage and came from behind and tried to hit Connor from behind then the other member threw a punch ended up being a melee in the ring while Khabib was attacking the members outside the ring I thought it was disgusting. I personally think, and I, I, uh, Hermilo, I'll let you talk in just a second. I personally think I'm going to go out right on the line. I'm a fan of Connor. I'm a fan of Khabib. Uh, Khabib is one of my absolute favorite people uh, to watch in a UFC. But I personally think Khabib should be suspended. Khabib should be fined. And here's the big one. I think Khabib should be stripped of the title with that i'm gonna throw it over to you hermilo what do you think about what i just said and do you agree disagree tell me what you think we have not had a chance to talk about this whatsoever so i'm very curious to see what your take is on this yeah that's exactly what i was thinking i mean it was it took me by surprise completely i mean after he choked out 
um, McGregor, and then that happened, I was so surprised. And one of the first things that I thought was, this is disgusting. This should not be happening. I get it. McGregor, with his antics, got in your head, insulted him, insulted Khabib, but this should not have happened. He should have been able to control himself. And I do agree. I think he should be stripped, um, and he should be fined. Now, there's one more thing that's probably going to happen. Not only is he going to have to deal with Nevada Commission and possibly the uh, some sort of sanction from the UFC, but even Dana was saying that he might not be allowed to the country again to fight. You know, his... his in his uh his passport and things like that could be in serious danger i don't know if it will be when you have when you have lawyers involved you can stop a lot of things a lot of that was brought up when connor attacked the bus and they were talking about they were worried that connor will not be able to get a passport to to fight back into you come back into the u.s again uh, but when you have when you if you have quality lawyers, I, I, I don't think that will happen, uh, but it is a possibility. Uh, I think there's a big difference, even though I thought Connor should have been suspended for what he did with the bus situation. What happened at this fight went way beyond what Connor did when you're at a sporting event and. A fan and, and a fighter literally jumps over the cage and attacks another guy, even though he was part of Connor's tr team. He literally, when he won, he turned, he threw his mouthpiece, started yelling at his corner. His corner yelled back. Khabib jumped over the fence and attacked them, stepped right on to the press, uh, press area knocked over a table and the melee started the second reason you have so you have you have the fighter jumping into the audience then you also have one guy coming in the door and confronting connor when he's just you know trying to get he's trying to recover from being being tapping out and then to get a clear shot from behind as another guy climbs the cage and comes in and hits him from behind, all three guys ended up getting arrested. And and the big thing is, is all three guys were arrested. They went to Connor for statement and Connor refused to press charges on those guys. So they were later released. Uh, what are you going to add? Then we're going to go to some of the some of the comments from Dana White as well. Yeah, I mean, so I was watching the video, and what happened was that, yeah, like you said, I mean, this should not have happened in terms of you see a man recovering from just being choked out or a neck crank, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's just something you don't do. And not only that, I mean, the fact that Khabib stepped out, once you step out of that octagon and then somebody else, for example, somebody from the crowd, or in this case, Khabib's team, jumps in, that's a criminal act. Yes, it is. It's very much a criminal, a criminal act. act. Yes, it is. Uh, and that's where I had the biggest problem because... If you're there and you see him and he comes crashing across press row, crashing into the audience and he just and he starts pushing and throwing punches uh, and the melee strikes. It's it's a dangerous situation because that stuff spreads and it starts off with Khabib in the audience and then the guy defended himself, then another guy defended himself and then it just grows. I, I've been to many fights where that has grown, uh, you know to a level where it's very dangerous. Uh, Dana talks about, you know, his concerns of trying to take care of the audience. Uh, also, one of the things that I will say, and I think Tony Ferguson said it best, and that is a lot of things are said and there's a lot of beefs that go on before the fight. No matter what is said, no matter what the beef is, it's settled in the ring. That's the point. That's one of the points of combat fighting, prize fighting is I say what I say, you say what you say, but we meet in the ring, we have it out, and then it's squash. We shake hands. I may not like you, you may not like me, but we squash that beef. And, but it never spills out into the audience, into more, into, a dangerous situation like this. Uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, 
I agree, obviously. I, I agree that this should not go. Like, and, and don't agree with me if you no, don't agree with me, because no, I, 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 I really want to hear your thoughts. I totally. No, I agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, for example, could people saying we're not going to shake hands, and that's fine. You don't have to shake hands. Not even uh, required. Well, right, not you're not required, required to shake hands. You don't have to be best friends if the beef is still there after the fight. That's fine if you have those feelings towards Connor. But you should have never acted in the way you did. Now, I'm not trying to justify what Khabib did or condone. But at the same time, it's a little difficult. Or I, I'm trying to understand where he's coming from. Because, I mean, Connor was insulting a lot of things that are very important or sacred to... Um, Khabib. Yes, and that's and that's some gamesmanship, and and some and he crossed the line, and and uh, there's a lot of things that happen where he crossed the line, as, where I and I understand you're talking about spiritually, uh, talking about his faith and his country and things like that. So uh, I do understand why he was heated. Just the whole concept going in in the states, but I want you to finish your statement. Yeah, and I was just gonna say the you know for example having I'm not a religious person, but having studied a little bit of religion, I just understand how important that it can be to people. So if you're talking about someone's religion, someone's people, nationality, race, that can really strike a chord. Oh, absolutely, so, absolutely, it can. So I think in that sense, uh, Connor went went like you said across, across the line. So maybe just maybe even though it's just words. You know, you can say whatever you want, but maybe the UFC has to be a little bit more, I don't know, has a say in terms of like what people can say and cannot. I mean, it's a little bit difficult because you have all that yes, speech it, and whatnot. Right. But it's, you know, you just, as a person, you know what line not to cross. And that I think that that was just something that Connor shouldn't have done. No, that's, that's a great point. I mean, Connor's not 100% innocent in this, but when you're, I, I was looking at more of the actions of diving into the stands you, what, I, I kind of look at it. There are two different issues, which I do agree the UFC may have to start doing something to taper some of the comments that are made. But as a fighter, you should never climb over a fence and dive into the stands and start throwing haymakers, nor should you ever allow anyone, I don't care who it is, to climb over the fence and and to strike one of your fighters that's where i that's where i was the most disgusted by this whole situation right and I just, like i said i want to repeat once again we're not justifying or i'm not justifying what khabib did or his team i'm just yes you are to, no, no i'm just joking i'm totally joking there but, you know, trying to just you know kind of have people understand how this this happened yeah okay and because i understand because you yeah uh, it's it's one of those things that you have to be fair and balanced and you have to look at the whole picture uh, and how things happen. Now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to hear uh, what Dana White had to say about this. Uh, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Yeah, no, listen, being in there in the middle of this thing when it was going on, I felt that I, I, I have to start worrying about the fans and people that are inside the arena, media, the guys that are, you know, that are there watching the fight. And I felt that if we put the belt on him in the middle of the octagon, it was going to rain. And I thought that people would throw whatever they had into the octagon, and I thought it would be a dangerous situation, so I didn't do it. I said, we're, we're going to be lucky just getting him out of here without him getting pelted. So uh, that's what we try to do. All right, that was, that was Dana White talking about why he did not put the belt on Khabib after tapping out Conor McGregor. 
uh, because Khabib was in the ring and he was very upset and he really wanted Dana to put the belt around his waist uh, and announce him as the new champ. Uh, the question came up is, is Khabib champion? And so Dana is explaining why he did not put the belt around Khabib. What's your thoughts on about what Dana said and this whole transaction here? I mean, it makes sense. I mean, just look at how the crowd was reacting. I think it was definitely a pro McGregor um, crowd. So I think if that would have happened, mayhem would have broke out for sure. I mean, it kind of already did, but mayhem. I was going to say that ship had sailed. Mayhem was already in effect. The UFC did a really, really good job on making sure security was there or T-Mobile, the T-Mobile arena. But they did a really good job. So this, because this thing could have really grown to a, to, like I said, that Tyson Holyfield level. Uh, but, you know, I really agree with Dana. Dana at the press conference, I thought he was, he was uh, very informative uh, he wasn't, he like Dana gets accused of being a hothead sometimes. And I, and I'm one of those people, but you could tell he was taking this thing very, very serious and, and was addressing all the questions. Uh, here's another part of some, some other statements from Dana. He said, put, put my belt on me. And, and I said, no, we're, we're not going to put the belt on you because I think that the fans are going to go crazy and they're going to throw stuff in here. He says, I, I don't care. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I said, yeah, well, the other 20,000 people that are sitting here and paid for tickets aren't ready for this. You know what I mean? Um, and he said, if, if, I, if I have to be arrested, then, then I have to be arrested, but I want my belt put on me. And then finally, Cormier and Rockhold did a great job of uh, helping contain, you know, the situation and get him out of there. Now, do you agree what Dana what Dana did? Because I personally thought it was a smart, smart decision to cool things down. Because I think he's right. If 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 when you're in that arena, and if he gives if he puts that belt around there, first off, there's a lot of upset Irish fans, and that arena was packed with Irish fans. There's going to be a, there's a lot of upset people, but there's also a lot of upset people and a lot of tempers flaring because Khabib had gone into the stands. And so I kind of looked at a duel one because of the fact that there's a lot of things that's going to happen, uh, you know, not kind of re- not as not rewarding him by giving him the belt in the ring, but also taking into account how. There's a lot of people in the stands that you have to, that Dana White and the UFC is responsible for and making sure that they get out of that arena and the people in the, uh, in the casino and, and around that area get out of that area without any harm happening. Because when I go back and I keep going back to that, that uh, the Tyson Holyfield fight, it literally, it's, it went through, went through the stands into the arena out on the streets and that's where I praise the UFC for making sure that that didn't happen what's your thoughts on about the fact that Dana did not put the belt on Khabib and actually and how they cleared the ring and then announced the outcome it was a wise move I mean I was I you know when when the fight broke out inside uh, the octagon and then a little bit on the outside I really thought the crowd was gonna go you know like fans against fans I, yes, I was, I, 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 was wor- I was truly worried about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was I was just waiting for it. I thought, Jesus, what's gonna happen? Um, but no, I think uh, they diffused the situation really well given the time that they had. I mean, that was a wise move for him. And uh, I mean, I think even Dana mentioned in one of, in some video that even the mayor of New York had a run out. I the mean, governor, the the, 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 gov- the governor of Nevada was there. And if you if you have a situation where the governor of Nevada is they're getting the governor out of the out of the arena because they're worried that it's going to turn into a full fledged riot. You have a situation on your hands and it's it's the UFC and primarily Dana White's responsibility to the fans at this point more than even the fighters. Uh, because they come to the arena to watch an event and be safe 
not to be part of a full on brawl. And, you know, and because of, like you said, some of the things that Connor said, it was, it was countrymen versus countrymen, race versus other countrymen. It, it became a very personal thing. And that's what Connor, that's how, that's what Connor does to get in your head, that mental warfare. But this is when mental warfare has gone wrong. Uh, what do you say about that? Uh, yeah, and I mean, uh, even Khabib said it afterwards that he thought that, you know, he just didn't like the way the sport was functioning in terms of the, the showmanship and in terms of like the promotion of a sport. And he said that in part the media was to blame because they're all about trash talking and insulting people or fighters insulting each other. And he's not about that. He said, we want to bring the sport back to what it should be, which is fighters respect each other, fighters respect the sport. And of course, when they get into the ring, they do what they have to do to each other. But, it but should not don't be you about feel the trash? I mean, apologize, apologize about cutting you off. Don't you feel like uh, trash talk is a part of the game of, of combat sports, whether you are a kickboxer, a Muay Thai specialist, a, a boxer or an MMA fighter getting into the game and the mental warfare before that is, you know, that's how you sell the fight. That's how, that's how the reason why your Khabib is making more money than he's ever made in his life off of this fight is because he's benefiting from the trash talk that Connor is has made and the, the trash talk that he's done over over the years with other fighters that's how he built his name that's how that's the reason why we're trying to see was it two million pay-per-view buys was it three million pay-per-view buys Khabib didn't sell to three million pay-per-view buys which I personally think he's worth seeing I mean you know Khabib is a must-see fighter but the trash talk, the bravado that is Conor McGregor is the reason why this is going to be the biggest payday of your life. You got to take that into account. Uh, I forget who I was. I forget someone I was watching an interview with and they were talking about fighting Michael Bisman and Michael was talking all kind of trash and things. And then uh, they went to the bathroom and he went to the bathroom and then the door open and another guy walks in the bathroom and goes to the, into the, the urinal next to him. And he looks over and it's Michael Bisman who has just been talking all kind of trash. And Michael doesn't say one word to him. He just goes ahead and does his business, finishes up, washes his hands, turns to him and said, okay, back, back to the show. And he walks out and then he starts talking smack about him again. Uh, you talk about going back to the seventies and Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali had been, uh, he had been stripped of the title because he didn't want to sign. He didn't want to go to the Vietnam war. And, and he was trying to get a fight with Joe Frazier back. And, but my, uh, Muhammad was kind of low on money and, and Joe came to check on him and, and to see how he's doing. He offered him, you know, do you need anything or anything like that? And they were super nice. The minute that uh, they stepped out of the building, Muhammad was saying, Joe Frazier's a bum. I'm going to whoop him up and all this stuff. It's the selling of the, it's the selling of the fight. You can't have, you can't get the good without the, without the bad. Uh, does that make sense at all? It does make sense. But I think, uh, I mean, I agree in the but sense. But there's, now I do admit being that, crossing racial lines and crossing ethnic lines uh you know or the same thing but uh or racial racial religious lines is a very fine thing and and a, and a slippery slope so i do agree with you but go but, ahead but i don't think in, like i agree with you for example like if you let's go with boxing wrestling you've been talking boxing uh there's a fight between fury and wilder coming up and you can tell they've met before and, and you know, they, they're really cool with each other, just hanging out. But once they go out to, you know, the media, then they start talking trash. I'm knock you out. You're a bum. But I don't think Connor and Khabib had that pre agreed. No, it's uh, never, you know, it's, I mean? you know, it would be, it would come off very fake if it was pre agreed. Uh, 
part of I think part of Connor's game is is getting in your head and the mental warfare to take you out of your game. That's the reason why I had changed my opinion on who I thought was going to win. I I had been saying since this fight was announced, I have been consistently saying I thought Khabib was going to win and I thought he was going to win in dominating fashion. But the reason why I changed my answer is because I could tell how much Connor had gotten into his head. And just like Jose Aldo, he Connor had gotten really into Jose Aldo's head and it allowed Jose Aldo to make a massive mistake. And so I changed my decision because of the exact same thing. I was worried that Khabib was going to make a massive mistake because of the anger that he did. It's not only Connor's bravado, Connor's statements. It's not just to sell the fight, but it's also to win the fight. His bravado before the fight is just as important as a as a lead kick or a T kick or a push kick or a jab. It's one of the weapons in his arsenal that he uses to win a fight. And so that's the reason why I was saying that. Right. No, but I just wanted to go back a little bit to the fact that you were talking okay, about yes. that. You know, the whole um, trash talking is just part of part of just competition. You know, one man against one man or one woman against one woman, right? You believe you're going to beat them. There's a lot of, um, you know, anxiety. There's a lot of machismo, bravado. But I think Khabib, in a, in a way, is somewhat right. He's like, but the media really likes to make things bigger than what they really are. You know, they yes, really, they, yes, they, they very like, much so. It's almost like they pressure you to go even above and beyond just the normal level of trash talking they should be giving because you're a competitor and you truly believe you're going to beat your opponent. That's fine. But I think he is right. The media is really pushing like, no, you got to give me more, like way more than, than what it really needs to be. It's the it's the it's the the world of worlds of world star now. It's it's right. it's bigger, better. You have to in order to catch the media attention, you have to sell it and catch the media's attention. So you have to get bigger and bigger and more personal and more personal. Uh, and that's kind of what has happened. And this is the reason why Khabib was so upset. One of the things you know is you know when you're having something like this. This is the danger of it. Uh, I think we still have we have another uh, so a little bit more from what, what Dana was saying uh, last night as well. The way, the way that that works is Connor uh, was one of the guys who was attacked and things like that. Connor refused to press charges. So the guys that they did have, they've released. There were there, there were three guys from Habib's team arrested. I, I think they were from Habib's team. I don't know. Um, that were arrested and and they were released because Connor didn't want to press charges. All right, and that's and Dana, that's Dana talking about the fact that Connor did not press charges. And the reason why this clip is, is the perfect clip here is goes back to kind of what I said. Connor kind of gets that he is he is selling. He was selling the fight. It's part of his game, but he knows that it's gotten personal. And the fact that he uh, he didn't press charges, I think it was the right decision because he knows as he as he as you're selling fights and as you're as you're you're talking and, and things, you're, you're saying very personal things. He knows that he's crossed the line. Uh, so he understands why things get heated. Also, I think Connor knows that you everything was settled in the ring. Uh, Connor actually put up a couple of a uh, couple of tweets. Uh, where he talks about you know good, good knockout, good stoppage, or and he looks forward to the rematch. And then he had another tweet where he talks about how uh, this is not the end of the notorious one, and that he's you know he he's looking forward to coming back and uh, and getting that rematch. What do you th what do you think about the Tana White's statement about the fact that Connor didn't press charges, and the fact that in his tweets he talks about how he. Uh, still wants that rematch. Well, it just shows what uh, McGregor was talking about even before the fight happened, right at the press conference, that he's back. I mean, he has all the money in the world, but he's still doing it because he truly enjoys and he loves the game. He loves the sport. So, um, I mean, we'll see what he... I mean, the rematch, I don't... Well, well, you know what? We'll stop it right there. 
because what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're actually going to break down this fight. And we're going to talk about the fight because right now, everything we've been talking about is actually what happened after the fight. Now we're going to talk about the actual fight. Stay tuned and we will be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. All right, and we're back. And Hermilo and I have been talking about the Conor McGregor, Khabib Namagamanov, or Habib uh, Namagamanov, and the outcome of all the craziness that happened after the fight. And. Also, some of Dana White's comments uh, from the press conference afterwards as well. Now we're going to actually go back and we're going to talk about the fight and what we saw and and just kind of give our breakdown. So when you watch when you were watching this fight and when we're, we're watching this fight here. The first thing that I the big thing I was expecting was. Because Khabib, Connor had gotten into Khabib's head, I wanted to see was Khabib going to either be cautious because of of the comments and things that that Connor has done, he'd gotten in his head, or was he going to come out guns a blazing? And when I looked at this fight, the thing that I was surprised on is that Khabib got that takedown early. He got a takedown early and he was able to ride it out. And I thought that gave, that took all the butterflies away and put Khabib in a comfortable place. At that point, that's when I knew that Connor was in trouble because I thought Connor's biggest thing was catching Khabib while he's tight and finishing him. And that never happened. Khabib was able to settle in and get a takedown, get into a comfortable zone. And then you could see his confidence starting to grow and grow and grow. What did you see, Emil? I was just very surprised. You know, one of the first things that I noticed, they walk in, they, you know, ready to go. They go, they get close to each other. But then McGregor's, uh, how can I say that? Like pace. He was like very slow, almost like just trying to take it very easy. Like he was not doing what he was doing with Alder, which is in and out, being a, moving a little bit more. It's almost, I was thinking, is he trying to make it easy for Khabib to take him down? I mean, and then as soon as Khabib took him down, it's more like, okay, he's just going to try to weather it so he won't waste his energy. It's like, well, what are you doing? I mean, I just... I had, I see, I looked at it differently. Uh, one of the things about Connor is Connor is very, very efficient. And he's a very smart fighter in the ring. So when I looked at Connor as not coming out guns blazing, but I thought he came out with a tactical approach where if he comes, if, if aggression would been, I thought personally, the worst thing that could have happened for Connor. If Connor comes across the ring firing shots, it makes it easier for Khabib to hit him with a double leg and take him down and put him in a place where he didn't want to go. So I thought Connor was trying to be very measured and waiting, trying to bait Khabib in to fire a shot so that he could catch him. So that's the way I saw it. Well, just for me, it was more like he wasn't using, because usually what he likes to do is use his distance, you know, move his legs so he can use distance. But he wasn't moving his legs. I mean, at one point he was actually squared. When he was and he was actually really close to Khabib, he wasn't actually moving back and forth trying to like keep that distance to avoid the takedown. Okay, and so I looked at it as you know, I because I understand, I remember that part when he was squared. It, but if you a lot of times when you get scared, squared, he will move his hands, his hands, his right hand and left hand back and forth as a as a range finder. So that's I I thought he was, 
I thought he was being measured, but the thing I was most surprised on was that Connor Connor is one of the most explosive fighters you have when it comes to going backwards and catching you with that left hand. And he didn't do that. He actually became a very aggressive as far as not necessarily over aggressive, but he he became the guy who was pressing the fight and making Khabib go backwards. And I think that was their game plan uh, going into this. I think their game plan was to make Khabib go backwards, which would kind of take him off balance. But I thought it I thought it was the wrong decision because I thought it should have been Khabib making Khabib chase him so that he could catch him with that left hand, kind of like the way Stipe, when he was fighting Fabricio Verdum, Fabricio started following Stipe around the ring, and then was was uh, Fabricio eventually got caught because he was following. So I I, I was kind of thinking that would have been the better approach. Uh, especially because you you have so much power, even the, when you're bagging away as Connor did. So I thought it was a better decision. So I was really surprised that Connor became the aggressive move forward guy. Exactly, exactly. That's 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 what I was thinking. Like that's what I mean by he really wasn't using his in and out motion to bait uh, Khabib coming in. So and he landed a few shots, but I never saw in the entire fight that like any worry in Khabib's eye about. McGregor's offense or his punching power I thought I watched it was like watching a motorcycle go up a ramp the most nervous I thought Khabib was was when they were in the ring and they were getting announced and as things went on as he got more and more comfortable with Connor it became it grew and grew and grew and when he got that takedown Connor, it, it, the the catching catching could be before he before he loosened up went out the window. Uh, Connor did, I, you know, I will tell you this. Connor did a lot better on the ground than I ever thought he would. I thought that Connor would just get mauled and annihilated on the ground in the first round, but he actually had a very smart game plan. I liked how. Connor kept making sure he grabbed on Khabib's hand. I liked how he kept grabbing kind of the 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 tricep bicep area and up under the armpit of Khabib. That the reason why you do that is so that it really takes away the option of that ground and pound that hook. It takes a lot off of it. It makes it harder for a fighter to fire shots. So so it was very obvious that Connor had really worked on how to if you end up on your back how to not get pounded uh like some of the other fighters did uh when you were watching that ground and pound when you were watching that first round and going into the second round uh did you notice how connor was using the hands to kind of protect himself oh yeah i did but also another thing that i think uh he did really really well was on that first takedown uh khabib was trying to which is what he does uh trying to uh, grab uh, or how do you say it? like trap Connor's legs with his yes. own legs and Connor was really good about okay he got in the trap and he would be able to sneak him out that was the one and then now see that was the one thing that I don't think Connor was really prepared for and I have yet to see anyone be prepared for that he uh, uh Khabib once he gets you down he's like an anaconda with your legs he wraps his legs he wraps his legs around your legs so that you no longer have control of both of your legs and and if you can't get your if you can't get your base, then you can't get up. And so, did you notice how he kept wrapping those legs throughout? And with him wrapping up the legs, Connor had to expel a lot more energy uh, to get up. So that was one of the things that everyone who has faced Khabib runs into that same issue. And I thought ingenious, just ingenious. And so he was making Connor. Even though Khabib maybe in the first round wasn't destroying Connor on the ground, uh, and even and into the second round he wasn't destroying Connor, he made Connor tired. Uh, 
could you see it what, as he was getting that he was getting tired? I was just gonna say that. I mean, the first round, like I said, he, it was obvious that Connor was like, "Okay, he just dropped me. Breathe." Yes, Relax. exactly. He, he, you can see it in his face. But then, yeah, by the middle of the second round, okay, this is taking a toll on on Connor and a little bit of Khabib, but not so much. Yes, but there's a big difference when you're on top. Even if you get a little winded, you're still using momentum and and his power to to really start to clock clock Connor. Midway through, you could tell Connor had gotten tired. Connor was in trouble. When, once Connor I was never worried about Connor up against the the ring, up against the cage. It's when Connor had his back on the ground. That's when he it seemed like he was in the biggest trouble. Uh and I don't know even when you look at it, it was, it was just it was night and day. Once Connor became flat on on the ground on the canvas, Connor had no answer for Khabib at that point. As long as he could keep his back on the cage, he was okay. Uh, one of the things I did think was funny that Herb Dean did not catch is as and Khabib. I think this was in the second at the end of the second round. Connor was grabbing his gloves in the inside. That is. Clearly, clearly illegal. And uh, he did that like three or four different times for long periods of time. And Herb Dean never caught that. That's that crafty veteran move that he was doing to try to save himself from getting pounded. And Khabib was getting very upset with that. Uh, but it was a smart move because it saved Connor some, some serious beating. Which just shows that even though Connor is, what, dirty? Yes. Uh, he's long the tooth. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been doing this a while. Uh now when you when the finish came, I looked at it as this. Connor had gotten tired. Khabib was starting to break his will. Uh at the end of the second round, uh they he had a Kimura on him and I was like, "Oh god. If if Khabib if Khabib gets that Kimura on, it's over and I don't know if he's going to let him out." Uh, but Connor was able to get out of that Kimura. But at the end, when yeah. when Khabib, one of the things is when a fighter turns and gives their back, it's one of those things where it's like it's either one desperation or two they're really ready to give up or three both. And I kind of felt like. When Connor gave his back up, it was kind of both. I thought he was he was pulling out a Hail Mary, but if it didn't work, he was ready to give because the rear naked choke was on the chin. And so he was in no danger of going out. You you can't put a person out uh with a rear naked choke across the across the chin. It has to be up under the neck to be in serious danger. The one thing, but it, I, from someone who has been in a rear naked choke across the chin, it does hurt like crazy. But I think if Connor truly thought he had an answer for Khabib's ground game, I don't think that rear naked choke would have gotten him. I think he, at that point, he realized that he was in a big trouble and just decided it was time to give up. What do you agree? Disagree? No, I agree. I just wanted to add that when I saw that that uh, McGregor gave his back, I got a flashback into the Nate Diaz McGregor. Uh, yes, first, very much the so. Same move, the same thing. And you know, I don't think it is. I don't look at it as a coward's way out or anything like that. I it goes to, to me. I looked at Connor as that consummate professional, that always that cerebral fighter, where I think Connor knew. It was time to live to fight another day. The better man was Khabib, and I know I need to go back to the drawing board. Sticking this out, there's nothing good that's going to come out of this. Maybe it's time. It's time to give it up. And so that's kind of the way I took it. Is like uh, he was he was calling it a day. I'm um, also just wanted to bring something back uh, before we we um, you know end up wrap up about here. This okay. Second, but did you notice in the third round? Because I figured, okay, he's on the ground. That's where Khabib is king. That's where he dominates. But in the third round, there was a 
solid minute, minute and a half where they were actually standing. And that's when I thought, okay, this is when McGregor can actually show what he can do, start landing that left, you know, set him up. And that never happened. If anything, I think could be, I don't know if it was in the third or the second, he landed a huge right hand that dropped uh, McGregor. Great point. Okay. Uh, when I looked at this, the first thing is that first huge shot that was in the second round, I think okay. it was. I believe it was the second round. It was the first or second round, the, the big shot that landed. Um, I looked at it as Connor, and if you go back and you watch it, and, I, and I've watched it a couple of times, Connor is clearly concentrating on making sure because he's in fire, he's in complete firing range. And I think Connor was more concerned about I'm in his range. Make sure he doesn't hit me with a double leg and take me down. And I felt like he was concentrating so much on the double leg that 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 wild looping overhand right just connected flush. And uh, and Khabib nailed him and, and rocked him. Dropped him. Yes. Now in the in the third, what you're talking about at that point. This is one of the things that that I have learned over the years by watching watching MMA fighting fighting boxing, and uh, you know you've boxed as well. Mm-hmm. When you take a big guy, a big strong guy with a lot of power, one of the best ways to to negate a fighter's power is to drag him to deep water, start drowning him, make him tired. The more tired you get, the less power you have. The biggest pop Connor has is in the first round, the second round. When it rolled to the third round and, and Khabib had been riding on him for so long, I thought he took a lot of starch out of Connor. And at that point, Khabib was able to operate because he was no longer as dangerous as he would be in that first or second round. He Instead of him worrying about the Cobra striking you, you could actually settle in and take more chances. And that's when Khabib got super comfortable. And and that's when I said, at that point, you could see the starch was out of Connor. Connor stamina, who has, who has been known for having stamina issues, his stamina had betrayed him by sapping his power. He didn't get he didn't get tired and, and weak and sloppy like he did with the in the DS fight, but it showed his stamina showed as in that he had stamina issues because he lost a lot of power. And that's exactly why I was so surprised. Like I was saying earlier that he did not come out a little bit more active. Yes. In no. the first second round. That's why I was like, you, you might get tired, especially when, it, when the wrestling was, cause it was a matter of time before they went on the ground. Right. And so I thought he did that. That's why I said, I, that's why I thought he came in early on a measured pace because he, he wanted to, he didn't want to make the mistake that he did in the Diaz one fight where he came out guns blazing and then gets got tired and then his stamina betrayed him. But this time I personally think kind of like with you, I think Connor should have taken the Diaz one approach, which is come out firing. He should have came out firing with the intention of finishing Khabib off in the first early second round because all the experts, everyone that, that was watch, that leading up to this knew that if it got past um, the a round, a round and a half, two rounds, that Connor was in big trouble. So why not just put it all out there and, and just go firing? So I think the strategy of trying to put pressure on Khabib, the strategy of kind of pacing yourself, you, it was clear they had a game plan I just don't know if they had the right game plan. Right, I agree with you, and I'm actually surprised that it lasted as long as it lasted. Because after the first round, I thought it's probably going to be over in one more round. It went to the fourth. Okay, so we're going to wrap things up. But before we wrap things up, with the fact that Connor tweeted that uh, you know that he does want a rematch and he does want this fight again, from what you saw this time, do you think Connor can make the adjustments to make this? a closer fight i think so i mean he's a very smart fighter he's the guy that's always working um he's never um how do you say it? he's never he's never content you can you can just tell he just wants to get better and better and better but i just think if it, there was to be a rematch the first two rounds you just take full advantage and try to end 
or try to uh, finish uh, Khabib because other than that, I don't think his stamina is going to improve. And let's say they fight because the, the stamina has been a factor in the Mayweather fight, both Diaz fights. That's his, and then and in this fight, his last four fights, stamina has been a major issue. So when I look at this and I say, I think this could be an even dangerous, even a scarier fight for Connor because now that Khabib has gone through this situation, the mental warfare won't be in Connor's favor this time. He's been there. He's 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 walked through the 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 fire, and he he's ready. He he'll be ready for Connor, which makes it a much tougher fight. Uh, and it has Connor's ground game improved? It has improved, but Khabib has done, you know, what he's done to Connor to world class wrestlers. I don't think Connor can get his wrestling game to another level where he can be can negate Khabib's ground game. He Khabib trains on a daily basis with Olympic champions. Uh you know, when at AK, AKA Olympic champions, he has Daniel Cormier, Luke Rawcold, Kane Velasquez. He has some of the best wrestlers ever uh ever to lace him up there so Khabib's wrestling is always going to be far superior and I just don't see how he can close the gap there as far as how they're going to be able to handle the grappling and, and so Khabib's stand-up game could get better but I don't think Khabib mean that Connor's wrestling game so I, I think of it as a, a very tough mountain to climb but now questions so mm -hmm. based on how dominant Khabib was would you even want to see a second fight between those two? Okay, that's a great question. My answer, if 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 the person that was across the ring was not Conor McGregor, the answer would be no. And as a matter of fact, I think the UFC would say no, but it's Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor is the biggest box office draw there is. And because of that, Connor gets what he wants, and Connor's not afraid of anyone. He will take that fight. All right. All right. With that, this concludes our recap of the main event of UFC 229. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna we'll touch on some of the ramifications and what comes out in the news about this fight. But then we're also gonna break down some of the other fights on this card. So stay tuned, and we'll be back tomorrow. Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast.